This will be our last lecture on the topic of New Beginnings and the American Experience. We have discussed many ways in which America has been seen as a land of new beginnings. It has been seen as such by the Native Americans, by early European colonists, and by American citizens, even as the country developed and matured. But there is a flip side and a challenge that arises from living in a land of new beginnings. In a land that is new, in a land where everyone is always starting over, we must begin to ask ourselves how we relate to history. If you walk through a major town in Europe or Asia, you are likely to see buildings that are thousands of years old right in the center of town. In America, we have no such visual history. One excellent example of this trend is the Redwood Library by Peter Harrison in Rhode Island, built in 1748. It is America's first public library. Peter Harrison wanted the library to have a sense of history and tradition. We can easily see that he pulled from the traditions of ancient Greece and Italy in creating his library. This certainly lends the library a powerful air of history and erudition. In some ways, the design seems awkward, however. The classical elements seem almost pasted onto a more provincial building design. But Harrison went beyond imitating European history in architectural style. What appear to be stone columns are actually made out of wood. Even the appearance of age itself was invented. After painting the facade, Harrison sanded it down to give it the appearance of having a history. You might notice some of the same neoclassical influences in the architecture of the White House, home of the President of the United States. This trend stays with us till today. Take a look at these three brand new homes in the new suburb of Mountain House, California. Notice how the variety of styles reference many periods in history, though the houses themselves are brand new. In fact, all three of these houses are the same house by design. It is only the historical references on the external facade that differ. American artists have sometimes felt the same longing to be close to history while living in the land that was new. You will remember that artist Thomas Cole was enamored by the pristine landscapes of America. But even he felt a longing to find history and spent a good deal of time in Italy painting ancient historical subjects. Other American artists have expressed similar attitudes. American sculptor William Wetmore Story, on returning from a visit to Rome in 1856, said, To whatever the hand of man builds, the hand of time adds grace. Nothing is so prosaic as the Raleigh knew. The famous American writer Nathaniel Hawthorne expressed this sentiment about being in Rome in 1859. The state of feeling which is expressed oftenest at Rome. It is a vague sense of ponderous remembrances, a perception of such weight and density in a bygone life, of which this spot was the center, that the present moment is pressed down or crowded out, and our individual affairs and interests are but half as real as elsewhere. We might argue that a similar longing for history 
and even a need to manufacture a false history, is with us today in the form of fashion. Take a look at these three shirts belonging to a recent catalog of fashions by popular American retailer Gap. Notice how each one refers to a history that is almost certainly not experienced by the person wearing the shirt. Notice as well how the shirt gives off the appearance itself of having its own history. The shirt, though brand new, has been artificially aged. This is the end of our considerations of the longing for history and the end of our lectures on America as a land of new beginnings. After completing this lecture, you might want to begin Assignment 3. In Assignment 3, I will be asking you to consider all of the stories surrounding the issue of new beginnings and to ask how these stories relate to your own American experience.